What we've done is we've just made the area safe. We had reports of a few people getting stung. So we've come down, as you can see, we've taped off the area, um, directed people around different ways. We've called for the, uh, the beekeeper, the people who know how to handle the bees. Young James here has been talking to the bees and asked them to congregate in one spot, so I wish I had. And uh, we're now hoping that uh, they play the game and go into the hive. Miles, what's the plan? Uh, hopefully hop on a uh, uh, extendable scissor lift and uh, get up in the tree and uh, snap the branch off and drop the whole bees and branch and all straight into the actual bottom box. And then close it up and then um, if any more bees coming around, we'll just hit them with some uh, fly spray. Stop the general public from getting stung. And what will you do with the captured ones? You'll lock it up during the day? I'll have to take it down and put it in the back of the car until uh, the show's over and done with this afternoon. And uh, yeah, and then I'll have to take it somewhere. And this is the time of the year for uh, for getting swarms miles? Yes it is. Uh, lots of honey around this time of year, lots of breed, good breeding conditions, of course lots of queens hatching and uh, you end up, uh, you can make a lot of beehives up this time of year if you wanted to by simply just ripping queen cell out, cutting it out of the frame, putting in another beehive, a couple of frames of bees, honey can double your production very quickly this time of year. And as far as the day goes, Miles, a um, bit predictable. It was cold the last couple of days and then suddenly a warm, a warm Always day. Always on the warm days, anything over 22 degrees, the bees get out there and they'll want to go somewhere. Especially if they've got a queen that's already hatched, ready to go, they'll fly whenever the warm day arrives. And how far away, Miles, do you think the uh, hive that produced this swarm is? Uh, it could be a K away, could be, it could be 100 metres away. And the bees all spread out everywhere. What's happening? Have well, we come, when, we caught them? When when you shook them, they they uh, became airborne, but the main cluster went down into the box. So they'll they'll cluster again, either on the box or in a little limb close to the box, and they can go back down into the hive. It's only a matter of waiting, and yep, as long as the minutes, queen, as long few as the minutes, qu yep, okay. she'll be in. She'll be see in. They're, they're, see, they're all flying in the one direction back to where the swarm was. They're all facing in that way. I know that's where the pheromone smell is from the queen, yep. and now they've got to follow that back down to where she is. She's doing now is is groping around in amongst the bees on the floor to make sure that the queen isn't down on the floor oh, okay. and not in the box. Yeah, well you've got some on the branch that's right on the very corner outside. Put your hand down and bring them back. Actually, they're all starting to cluster there. Hey. Miles, how come there's no more going to the tree? Um, I've snapped the branch off and uh, all the pheromones that were on the stem of the branch are no longer there. So the bees have got nowhere to go to in an emergency. So they can't, they just don't know where to go to fly back. So they go to the next pheromone smell, which is their own, which is wherever I've got the beehive. And they'll hunt that until they find it, zoom in, and fly straight to the others. Down there. Go on, get in. 
Go on, get in. So, Miles, how come they're feeding? They're putting out pheromones to bring the other bees. Just using a bit of smoke to push them in to hurry them up. Normally you'd leave, yeah. it, leave it here for a couple of hours. Yeah, but I'm just trying to get things move along pretty good for the public of the Melbourne show. And a bit of a copywood collection. Nothing went nothing went wrong, the branch didn't break and... No, nah, at least the branch didn't end up on the ground, is yeah, that, that's yeah. what you mean, yeah. yeah. So this is just for the excess bees that we need to uh, get rid of, obviously we can't catch, yeah. catch them, so... To remove the hazard, we've got to destroy it. You're going to die that lonely beekeeper day. Because we haven't gone far enough away from the actual collection area, we'll have to keep it in a cool, calm place at the moment uh, till later this evening. Then we'll take it, when we finish the show, take it down, say about five or six k's or more to another beekeeper's place and um, he'll let it out in the morning. We'll leave it locked in overnight as well. And uh, all well and good, the bees will be good. And how did the capture differ from a normal capture? But Usually you leave the beehive sitting there for uh, the least until the end of the afternoon. The bees start working in and out and then you come back that night and then you shut the entrance while they're all home and then take them and relocate them. So we've had to move them on a little bit more quickly than normal. Yes, I had to smoke it more than normal, uh, hence why before I ran out of the smoker fuel. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we destroyed the rest of the bees that are hanging around in the tree. Uh, and the main thing is to break the limb off so they don't keep going back and if there is any left over nine times out of ten the bees will actually fly back to where they've come from last time uh, they won't be able to know where they are okay Miles, well thanks very much you're welcome